everybody, welcome back to Rain and Pause. I'm Mitch and today I'll be giving you my top five tips for a successful painting session. Tip number one is to be prepared. If you're mixing up fresh colours, try and mix them up the day before you paint so that gives it plenty of time for any bubbles that you introduce in the mixing to dissipate and come out so that way you're not going to end up with bubbles in your final painting. Make sure you've got everything nice and laid out, everything's easy to reach. So if you're doing a swipe, make sure your swipe tools are set off to the side of your bench. Make sure that anything that you'll need to thin or thicken your paints while you're working is out and ready to go. If you're doing uh, brush painting, for example, make sure all your brushes are laid out. You've got your palette ready. Uh, this goes for any style of art, not just paint pouring. So being prepared and being ready is the first step in a nice successful paint pouring session. Do that the day before, week before, month before. It's not going to change the quality of the canvas. Just tape up those backs and have them ready to go sitting in your, on your shelf or in your studio. And that way, whenever you feel the need to paint, you can just reach up, grab a canvas and off you go. Uh, that same goes for priming. If you're doing MDF rounds or coasters or anything with wood, if you need to prime your wood, do that ahead of time. You can do that months in advance. Once that wood is primed, it's ready to go. So you can just pick it up and start painting. Tip number two is to clear your schedule. Free up your day and make sure that nothing's going to interrupt you while you're painting. Of course, a phone call or a child or, you know, you get called out into the office or to work or something like that. Those things are always going to happen. But try and free up your schedule. Make sure you don't have an appointment that you need to go to and you think, I'm just going to quickly do this canvas before I go. Because you'll always be working on a time frame and you'll always be working within that limit and thinking, crap, I've got to rush this. I've got to get everything done. And when you work like that, you tend to make more mistakes. You mix things incorrectly. You put the wrong color down in the wrong place and you won't be happy with your final, out, uh, final outcome. So my other tip with this, uh, part of the same tip, is to put on some relaxing music. Just go with the flow. If you've got a favorite soundtrack you want to listen to, chuck that on in the background and just paint. Obviously, if you're doing YouTube videos like I am, you can't have that music in the background for copyright reasons. But if you're just having a nice relaxing afternoon paint session, by all means, go for it. Do whatever makes you comfortable. If you're more comfortable sitting down, standing up, you know, leaning over the bench, whatever you find, relaxing and comfortable to work with, go ahead and do that. Tip number three is to label everything. And when I say everything, I mean everything. I label all of my pigment jars. So I use this little picky pigments mostly. So these have a label on the bottom and you can see that there, it's got the name of the color and everything on the bottom. But I also put a label on the top and I also label the corresponding uh, paint jar that I've got these in and I only label my TLP ones with my label maker. So because there are so many TLP colors, having the label maker reserved just for those means that I always know that that color is a TLP color. Now, if I'm mixing up something different, for example, a cell activator, I will use a little white sticker dot and I'll just write in permanent marker on the top, either a felt tip or a Sharpie. And I'll just write the name of the brand and a general description of the color. Normally I can see what that is. And if it is a longer color, so for example, I'm mixing dioxazine purple with quinacridone nickel azo gold, I might need to put two stickers or three stickers or get a bigger one for the top. In that case, I've got some Avery labels, some little uh, postal labels, which I might either just stick one on the top or I could go to my computer and use the built-in software to print a label to go on the top of this. Tip number four is to write everything down. The worst thing you can do is create an amazing artwork and then you sell that artwork and six months down the track, that same buyer comes back and goes, oh, can you recreate that? And you go, hmm, no, I don't know what colors I used. Sometimes you'll think, oh, I, I love this artwork. I will remember what colors they are. But chances are when you go back to recreate that, you'll forget. I've experienced this recently, recreating a set of coasters for a customer and I couldn't remember what colors were used. So they look a little bit different, but luckily they're happy with them and they're going to take them. So write everything down. Keep a little notepad next to you. And whenever you add a color, write down the order. So if you put a black down first, followed by a red and then a yellow and a green, write down the order that you layer them. If you change the layer, write it down again. Uh, filming your um, paint sessions like I do for my YouTube channel, filming everything is a really great way to uh, record all of that. And you can always go back and watch that later and see exactly how you layered them. Still, writing it down is the best way to do it because you can do that in the moment and keep track of everything as you go. And tip number five is to be organized. Keep your studio in an organized manner 
so that you can find everything when you need it. So I built this custom uh, cupboard system behind me and I've got everything organized and laid out so everything is within easy reach. So I've got all my little piggy pigments here because I use them every single time I paint. I've got all of my paints up here and while you can't see every single color, I do know that this row is for reds. I know this row is metallics. I know this row is blue and I can see the ones that I most commonly access. Uh, I've got my paper towel up here. I've got all my colors mixed up over this side. So everything is within easy, quick reach. If I need to mix up a new color, I can just turn around, grab it and I'm ready to go. I'm not rummaging through a drawer chucking tubes of paint here and there. I can see which ones are empty, which ones are full, which ones I need to replenish and which ones are fine. So keeping all of that nice and easy to reach is my last tip to a successful painting session. Also going back to tip number three with labeling everything, uh, I label all of my bottles as well because I mix up uh, for the blooms, uh, Josonia and water mixture. I've got flow trolling bottles as well. So labeling all of those uh, is really handy as well. And again, they're within easy reach. I keep everything up here, so I can just turn around, grab it when I need. So hopefully you found these tips helpful and they are certainly things that I've had to learn uh, in my painting progress. Uh, keeping things within easy reach has been the number one thing for me because I do have a relatively small space. I had to find a way to make everything accessible. So the Ikea shelves that I custom built behind me are perfect for that. And I put everything in an order that I am going to use more often. So for example, the TLPs are easy access because I mix them up every single day. So finding something that works for you, if a drawer works for you and you're able to pick things out of the drawer and see them and they're easily accessible, go ahead and do that. But make sure everything's organized, clear your schedule, and you just go into it with a clear mind and don't stress. That's another major tip, free bonus one for you. Uh, don't stress when you paint. If you're worried about a commission, if you're worried about getting something absolutely perfect, things are likely to go wrong. So just go into it, understand what you have to do. If you know that they want a black base with X color and Y color and Z color, then think about the best way to layer those and just go for it. It's just wasted paint at the end of the day. It might take you one or two or three goes, but the more you stress about it, the more worked up you'll get and the more mistakes you'll make. So just take it easy, go with the flow, and enjoy the art of painting. So if you liked this video and if you like what, uh, what I'm doing here at the channel, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time guys. Bye.